welcome back. So, yeah, happy holidays. It is holiday time. Hope everybody's having a great holiday, which kind of leads into my first point here. Um, so, this morning, a nice fellow, I'm sure he's the most helpful sort of guy, he actually filed this in the most instructive possible fashion. He just happened to file this issue in the Lee Chess Q&A section. And so my initial reaction was, dude, you're, you're filing a bug in the Q&A. We're not going to have a discussion here. Go file this in the forum. And I was fully expecting that he would say something here and it would sound pretty crazy and probably off base. Um, so I figured, you know, it's probably good enough to just say, yeah, off to the forum, we'll discuss it there. Well, it turns out he filed this in the forum and it actually makes sense. Now, what is this? Um, this guy's observing that if he's playing atomic chess and he's promoted his first couple uh, well he's got two bishops to begin with somehow he's been promoting to bishops let's be honest you can see it in the move list 42 f1 equals bishop check 44 e1 equals bishop check it's pretty clear what's going on in this particular situation this player has chosen to promote all his pawns to bishops or at least two of them um, and he's having kind of a fun time with an opponent who is choosing not to resign fair enough okay my initial uh, reaction to this was just abject horror like dude you're being a troll this is not helpful why would you do this to your opponent Furthermore, do you not realize how risky it is to make these kinds of promotions because you lose your winning chances? And so, just to confirm this before I just completely tear into the guy, um, I went up and, well, let's do it here. I went to the game, uh, scrolled to the end, and I said, okay, so, well, says minus 10 but that doesn't seem to make any sense right i mean maybe there was a bug with the evaluation maybe stockfish is somehow at fault and minus 10 is just like a computer being overly optimistic for no good reason who knows right well who knows is um our opening explorer in table base um which quite helpfully points out that after white plays king e3 Black can play bishop to c3, and he's going to win 33 moves later. Black wins by force here. I could not believe this. Um, and so, yeah, I, I learned a thing or two about atomic chess today, for sure. Um, the idea is, well, I mean, let's play it out, right? We got the book here. Let's say white tries to put the kings together. Um, and white's just going to aggressively pursue linking the kings. Uh, black says fine. I'm going to let that happen. And white links up the kings. So that means that it's a lot harder to separate the kings, right? You would think that this could not possibly be a win. Because, I mean, how do you get these two kings separated from each other? Um, so, I mean, here, black's even making some effort to leave the kings linked together. Um, but the key here is a zugzwang, where white can no longer keep the kings linked together, and then black just forces the white king into the corner and checkmates him. Yeah, no, this is a new development. Um, this atomic endgame table base um huge kudos to nicholas um i forget his last name i'm totally i i know anyway nicholas f is our um developer for these and 
I'm super impressed and I helped him in some ways with, uh, in some very small ways, um, with just generating and testing and debugging. But no, he's been immensely productive and useful um, in this endeavor. I think it's gonna help people a lot to understand uh, end games in general. Um, I'm surprised that we don't use, use more heavily um, these table bases for just normal chess. A separate point though. So, okay. So, um, yeah, now this, this is legal because, I mean, the guys, yeah. If the kings are adjacent, check no longer applies because, like, the theory here is, like, if you, if black were somehow to be able to take the king, his own king would explode. So you can't do that. Um, plus, this just makes atomic chess that much more hilarious. I mean, who doesn't enjoy a good endgame? So the key point is that you can't give checkmate, or you can't even give check when the kings are adjacent. And, like, if black were to run away here with king c7, if it were black's move, white could give pursuit. So it's going to require a zugzwang to get these kings separated. Um... Actually, why doesn't he play king e8? Oh, we have a, a different zugzwang here. And then, yeah. Um, black just wins pretty easily because the kings can't join up. Um, white's not allowed to sack his king on either of these, so... Um, yeah, you can't... The king can never capture anything. Anyway, so... It dawned on me, okay, so the guy's technically right. Is this really a big deal? How could this possibly be a big deal? Is any, I mean, most positions where you have three bishops, a guy's just promoting all his pawns to bishops just for the fun of it, and his opponent doesn't have any material. Well, that's not guaranteed to be the case. I mean, for all we know, black was in some really obtuse position where the only winning move was to promote to a bishop and then trade some pieces. So this actually is kind of a big deal in that, it, you know, I mean, it never is going to happen in a real game, but it could happen. And it could happen in a really high profile game. So I figured, okay, fine. You've demonstrated to me that, I mean, this got ruled a draw um, I was quite impressed by this. Um, not no, so much by the fact that um, um, he actually played these moves, but the fact that he had the gall afterward to raise this on the forum, and that he's actually right was even more surprising. Um, usually, I mean, if somebody points out something... Well, okay, I'm not even going to go there because that requires me to weigh in on um, a really famous chess personality on Lee Chess, and I'm not going to go there. So, yeah, we found this position. Um, and we found that, yeah, it's actually important that for this kind of position, um, where there is a forced win, that you can't rule this as a draw by insufficient material as the server has ruled it. Um, you have to let the players play it out. And since there can, there are no captures in this sort of position, um, well, that's that. You, I mean, they have to play it out. Okay. So, that said, uh, other hilarious thing about this is that this issue got filed today. I mean, we're on the freaking holidays. People are enjoying chess on the holiday. You would think that he would take a moment to, um, I don't know, he might not be so motivated to actually file this in the feedback um, forum. But he did file it there. And he did a really good job explaining that no, um, black is winning, so even though he might not so much care about his rating points or whatever, he's observing that there's a legitimate issue at stake here. It was 
I'm just taken aback. It's just it was a really well filed report. Um, got down to the point as quickly as possible, gave me a reproducible use case, and explained it. And I'm like, well, crud. Now what do I do? Well, okay. So the next thing I did. Um, oh, nice. Okay. So the next thing I did um, is I went to the source code. And um, we're doing test driven development. Uh, so I wrote up a test for this. Um, yeah, under the test directory Scala uh, atomic variant test. So here's a corpus of tests for Lee chess. I saw that some other developer. Uh, other Lee Chess developer had added this test here that says do not draw inappropriately on bishops versus bishops where an explosion is possible that causes the bishops to be removed and subsequently explodes the king or concurrently does that kind of explosion. Um, so I said well I can write a test I just copy this paste it down here give it a name Take the position, write out the move, e2 to e1, promote to a bishop. I mean, I just basically copied this test, pasted it, filled in my details, um, and said that um, it, this even has the same outcome, is that the game has to continue. The game cannot immediately conclude as a draw. Uh, you have to keep playing. Um, so I wrote the test. Uh, and then I read through the source code. We'll cut to the gist of it. Is that um, actually here's a better way? Uh, insufficient mating material dot scala. Um, this function was only used for atomic chess. So uh, I know this is scala. You guys probably aren't so familiar with scala. Um, so I edited the comment up here saying I'm changing this functionality. Uh, we use this to check are the bishops on different color, meaning does white have all the bishops on white squares and does black have all his bishops on black squares? Or does white have all his bishops on black squares and black have all his bishops on white squares? Such that none can capture each other. Um, I also added here, well, I'm changing the condition somewhat you also can't be able to checkmate. So we have to be able to handle this example that we saw over here, where black's got, um, I mean, there aren't any black bishops that can, that can capture a white bishop, but black can still checkmate because he has at least three bishops, and those three plus bishops are on at least two colors of squares. Hey, happy holidays. Um, so while I still got momentum, let's keep going. Um, so I defined in Scala a couple expressions called bishops on same color and bishops are same color uh, and added this condition here that um, if all the bishops are the same color um, then consider this uh, drawn um, if a player has fewer than three bishops or consider this drawn if all the bishops are on the same color, square. Um, so uh, I added this condition in here. Uh, this is the only functional change. I did change a comment down there, just better clean up some of the code. Um, but yeah, I think I've nailed it. And to prove that, over here, I just ran the command uh, simple build tool space test. Um, it occurs to me that uh, you can't see my command line on the bottom part of the screen, but you have to trust me. The command was sbt space test. Um, and it runs all the tests for the entire uh, code base, uh, including my additional tests somewhere up here somewhere. Uh, I should say atomic variant chess or test. Um, 
I couldn't figure out how to run the atomic test by itself. And it's probably best that I run the entire test suite anyway. Uh, but yeah, the outcome of this test is everything is successful. Um, so next I gotta figure out, yeah, no. I mean, this is, this is your puzzle. This is like somebody's got a jigsaw in front of them and they're assembling it together. This is like you've got a Rubik's Cube and you're trying to line up all the cubes or all the faces of the cube to look nice, be all the same color on each uh, face. This, I mean, figuring this out, getting the logic correct, and how to do all your else's and if's um, took quite a while. And I'm, I'm really impressed with how it turned out. I'm pretty sure this is correct. <laughs> it passes all the tests. We can always add more tests if for somehow some reason this ends up being incorrect. But because that ended up being a one-liner, we can mathematically uh, or theoretically judge it for correctness. Um, or at least see where it has potential to break things. But the only potential for this to break things is in the condition where the bishops are the same color. Um, so that was a thing we weren't handling differently. Like the way this code used to work. Um, now we have to actually look at the rest of the code because some of that got cut off in the diff. Um, so we're talking about this here. This used to obtain all the bishops for the white player all the bishops for the black player and check is there a white player bishop which is on the same color of square as a black player bishop so does white have a bishop on a white square and black have a bishop on a white square or does white have a bishop on a black square and black have a bishop on a black square um, and that all still executes um, as you see here, I left that code alone. The rest of this in the diff gets cut off, but the rest of that implementation is still intact. This is the only functional change, and it's just beautiful. Um, possibly the best Scala code I've ever written, because I don't write much in Scala. Um, maybe one day I'll have to write more if people... I don't know, if there's a demand for good code out there somewhere. Maybe someday I'll be writing more good code. Um, it, this is certainly beautiful. It's, um, and it took several iterations and lots of puzzling over what all these, like map and filter and distinct and size and how to do even Boolean operators in Scala. Uh, I just haven't done this in a while, but um, there were so many examples in the same code base um, that that gave me a good handle on. Oh, yeah, and the other thing, you, the difference between val and def. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think def refers to a lambda, whereas val refers to um, an already evaluated expression. Um, I would say a reference, except Scala doesn't really do it doesn't give you objects that are mutable in most cases. Um, so, um, so the key here is that this bishop's on same color only gets evaluated in the case where we end up all the way over here to the right. Um, I didn't feel that was necessary to create a... Actually, it might be useful, but I'm going to leave this be for now because this not king pieces is less than three pieces. It's pretty straightforward. I don't really have a need to create a separate um, definition for that. Um, so I wrote the test. Um, uh, let's see, get diff. Actually, I want to get status. 
So those are the two files I modified. Um, I ran all the tests, all the tests were successful. So this, I mean, yeah, the only exposure, back to my point, is in the case where um, the bishops are actually of the same color. And for what we see here, the way this used to work, is that it used to see is there a white player bishop and a black player bishop that are on the same color of square. Um, which is not going to be the case if all the bishops are the same color. So mathematically or theoretically, this cannot break anything that wasn't already broken. Uh, this used to rule that um, if all the bishops are the same color, no matter how many bishops the player has or what color squares they're on, that's a draw. And now this is fixed. Um, so... Uh, I just have to figure out what's the right... Oh! Scale of chess. Okay. So, if I want to patch this, I need to create a scale of chess fork. Because uh, I sure as heck don't already have one. Guys, we're going to fork scale of chess. Um... All right, hit the fork button. Um, get the URL. Get remote remove origin. Get remote add origin, my thing get checkout create new branch called um atomic um what do i want to call this insufficient material uh, atomic sufficient uh, no i want to call this atomic mating material or mating bishops Uh, or atomic same color bishops. Uh, that's too specific. It gets really into the implementation. In abstract, what am I trying to fix? In abstract, I'm trying to fix um, um, yeah, this really has to do with mating material. Specifically, mating bishops. Uh, okay, so we're now on branch atomic mating bishops. Uh, get status on this directory, get add on this directory, get status. So now we're ready to commit those changes. Um, once again, those changes are the change to the insufficient mating material class, as well as the test condition itself. Uh, that's all good. Uh, get commit. Three or more bishops on two colors of squares um, on both colors of squares are sufficient. Now that's that's the implementation though. Um, the, really this is the class of positions where one player has all the bishops. Um, One player has when all bishops are of the same color. Uh, test 
test for... Now, what am I doing? I'm both testing and fixing something. Um, people have probably seen Randall Monroe's comic about git commit comments. I tend to be... I don't know. OCPD might be an appropriate acronym for um, just how pedantic I am about some of these comments. Because I want to be able to look something up later and understand what it's for. Um, so... So the gist of this is add condition for all bishops being the same color. Uh, belonging. Uh, how do I put this in politically neutral terms? Because people hate the word, like, they're all white bishops. They're all black bishops. People hate when you put it that way. Um, uh, the same player. Now I'm debating, do I want to reword this and say, for one player having all the bishops? Yeah, that's probably simpler. Uh, uh, get push origin. Oh, what was the branch name again? Get branch dash v get push origin atomic mating bishops. Hopefully Ornicar doesn't kill me for that. Um so um now what was our old master? Uh nope. Nope. It's up here somewhere. There it is. Get remote. Uh, get checkout master. Get branch delete. Um, the branch locally that I just created. Uh, um, well, before we delete that. Yeah, no, this actually got pushed, so that's good. Um, get remote, remove origin, get remote, and origin being the original origin. Um, pull request this. Um, And description, when one player has three, greater or equal to three bishops, and those bishops are on different square colors, uh, are not all on the same square color. Um, uh, so motivation first. Because Endgame Explorer reveals that positions 
most positions with uh, some positions with bishops are one, or some with most. Um, because Endgame Explorer reveals that they're one, um, fix in Win by force uh, correctly reveals that they win by force. Um, fix atomic chess rule set. Implementation to comply with. Cite the forum post explaining. Okay, does that look fine? Um, uh, yeah, no, I'm actually going to be verbose like that because I'm not sure how this is going to show up everywhere. Create the pull request. Uh, player having all the bishops. Woo! That was fun. Um, okay. What else is up? Uh, implement loser's chess. Oh. Oh, this is going to be my big next thing. Uh, Ian's beaten me to it. Uh, there were two bugs with evasions, uh, which I copied from the giveaway, which is not me to deal with evasions. Um, okay. Mouse Jeng seems to be the one that's incorrect. Uh, well, gosh. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, I was going to go whack my head against like a desk or something for the next hour trying to figure this out, but, or I could at least show like what that discovery process is like. Um, uh, it was actually going to be a little bit more instructive because I could show you like what are all these perfed numbers, what do they mean. You could actually research this on your own because I mean now this would be duplicate work for me to go ahead and do it. Um, I was under a different impression that he wasn't available to do this kind of analysis, yet he still felt like moving forward for whatever reason. So I was going to point out, um, uh, so this morning uh, I actually fixed the move count generator, uh, which is used for performance and tuning and, um, and testing. Um, so I fixed that for a different engine to be, uh, well, let's look at the details because I actually have time to go into all this now. Um, I changed, uh, this is a popular engine, S-J-E-N-G. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, let me double check if the mic's on. Mic is indeed on, cool. Um, but yeah, I observed that this move generator tester, uh, this doesn't show up very well at all on this kind of display. But this, I added lots of lines of code that I copied from elsewhere in the same source code file. Uh, we'll keep it as simple as that because that's really not so readable there. Um, uh, so yeah, I made a fix to this engine such that it um, now respects the fact that captures are mandatory. Um, so now what do we got here? There are two bugs with evasions. 
No, it seems that... <laughs> Too slow. Okay, yeah. Stockfish wins the race. That's awesome. Um... Okay, so... I can't exactly see his code changes, can I? I mean, is this going to look like what I saw earlier this morning? Nah. I'm not going to be able to read this so conveniently. Um, well, I could bother with trying to figure out what the difference is, because it's still an unknown at this point. We're still really close in either respect. Um, it's just that here, after three and a half moves, uh, these numbers are different, meaning that Stockfish comes up with a different number of possible games uh, that are three and a half moves long than uh, Strang does. Um, and Stockfish's number is lower, and that's probably correct. Uh, we would expect that there aren't as many um, legal moves if you have to make captures mandatory as if uh, captures are optional. So. After e3, e6, king e2, queen h4, e4, any perf with depth larger than 1 gives incorrect results. Um, so it seems that it does not handle checkmate after queen takes e4 correctly. Uh, I guess, yeah, I could see that. Um, da, da, da. I suppose I need to download the engine again. <laughs> Do I still have this open? Um, yeah, looks like I'm going to end up Man, I thought I was going to be done with this engine. Just made a really simple change. Just copying code from one space to another. But I broke it. Um, so, I'm going to go... Uh, let's go there, go to my fork. Let's download that again. Um... Let's go back to the fishnet directory. Yeah, I'm running tons of tests at the moment, by the way. Um, just making engines a lot better in general. Um, I've still got 18 open issues in my tracker. No matter how I try to kill or close some of them, they just keep popping up. There's just so much to deal with, but we'll get there one step at a time. So, um... This is the engine. Uh, I want to check out. What did I call my branch? I called my branch uh, master. Okay. I was really confident in this change, apparently. Fix losers variant perfed to require captures. Um, wait, where was the search file again? Uh, I forget what file I changed in my most recent revision. Uh, I could have sworn that it was, in fact, um, search.c. Yes, that's the one. Oh, I guess my autocomplete didn't work because there's like four files that start with the letters se. So I was getting pessimistic about the autocomplete failing for no reason. Um, Okay, so here is my change I made earlier. Um, again, this is all copied code. So it really must not like the um, checkmate condition that happens somewhere inside all of this stuff. Um, Is there any way to verify um, 
with the players checkmated, what do you do? Um, I'm going to guess that's a no. Or, mm, no, I was going to say the recursive nature of this might cause something to break, but that would be surprising. Um, yeah, what do I do? Where's the bug? <laughs> okay, let's first demonstrate that the bug exists before going to look for it. So we want to configure and then compile using the command make. Um, okay, we're done with that. Um, let's see. Okay. So yeah, I want to see if I can verify that theory um, at a bare minimum. So also if I check in any more commits they'll automatically get pushed here anyway so I don't need that tab open. Um, so the moves to test are these moves. Oh now I need to figure out um, uh, well, so I need the FEN uh, to make that happen. Uh, so we're going to open up Stockfish. Uh, actually, we've got Stockfish right over here. And position, start, POS, moves, these moves. FEN, I'm sorry, D, debug command. Gives me the FEN string pretty conveniently. Um, now we want to go back, not into Stockfish, but into Spang. Um, and from Spang, we're going to say uh, set board. Uh, no. No, no, no. Don't move on me. I didn't want you to move. Set board again. There we go. Variant losers. Perfed one. Perfed one shows three legal moves for black, which is correct. Black can take on e4. Black can take on f2. Black can take on h2. Um, perfed two. Seven hundred ten. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. Does it duplicate the issue description? Issue description here. Any perf with depth larger than one gives wrong results. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. That might just be his platform where that's happening. Um, so let's go back to set board. Set board start position. Eh, whatever. Let's restart the engine. So variant losers uh, with perfect um, seven was the one he said he was having problems with. Where these numbers differed. Not sure how long that's gonna run. Um, also don't need that testing tool open anymore. So, yeah. Um, better thought would be to do this iteratively and see how long it takes for each iteration. Variant users, um, perfed four gives the number instantly, perfed five, mm, half a second. Uh, is that the right number? Ending in 795. Yep. That looks right. Perfect 6 ends in. Uh, now our last two timings were 0 0.03 seconds and 0.58 seconds. Oh, well, that one's 9.48. Uh, 
ending in 682. And that's correct. Um, hmm. <laughs> uh, so at this rate, 10 seconds versus half a second, we'd expect the next one, and this one took 0.03. I think, yeah, it's taking 20 times as much time with each step. Uh, so if I were to give, make this go much, I don't know, if I were to make this go, it would expand, um, it could take like 20 minutes. No, not 20 minutes, 20 times 9 seconds. 20 times 9 seconds, 9 seconds, or 9.48 is pretty close to 10, so it could take like 3 to 4 minutes. That's no fun. I need to do something a little more creative here based on a question I had earlier but didn't really bother answering because I didn't need it answered was why do we only return if we are at the maximum depth? Can't we also return if depth is exactly equal to 1 and we've generated all the moves? I mean... I guess we do have to check each move for legality, but we don't have to actually move it. Um, um, we can just say... Uh, actually, I guess checking it for legality is the expensive part. Uh, wait. You know, is there any way I could optimize this so it doesn't take like three to four minutes? That'd be nice. Um, I don't think so. Um, yeah, no, actually, I actually think this is optimized. If it's not, it really ought to be. The compiler ought to figure out how to optimize this. Um, oh, does this handle the checkmate condition? The condition where a player has no moves. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure this does. Um, perfect. Okay. Check legal, blah, blah, blah. Um... Yeah, so one of the first things that we do up here is see, are we in check? And if so, we have to generate moves based on being in check, else we don't. Um, so... If check legal. If our capture move is legal... Oh! Yeah, we only need to do this kind of validation. No, we actually need to do it even if we're not in check, because we could play a stupid move that puts us into check. And that's not permitted. Um, wow. If that's what's going on here, that's pretty wild. Though, that would shock me. Um, yeah, no. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with the algorithm. I don't see any way to optimize it. Um, I should take a minute to read the README and see is there any thread or thread in capital T. Is there any way to run this to um, run faster? Opening books, I don't need that. Getting your interface. Tuning it. String.rc. Benchmarking, running test suites, getting more info. Okay, fine. Um, there's an RC file. Size of the transposition table. Validation cache entries, proof number, search number, scale factor, development, scaling, razoring, cut drop, book learning. Uh, futility pruning, one ply extension, um, King safety, tropisms. Okay, so I don't see anything about like thread count. 
Um, wait. Is this seriously a single threaded engine? Uh, incredible. That can't possibly be right, can it? Um, string dash h. Wow. Um, yeah, never mind. The, 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 I guess this must be a single threaded version, or I'm, there's something I'm not understanding about this. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter because I'm already running num four other engines on four threads, on four cores anyway. Um, uh, but yeah, perf six returns in 30 seconds. It should come up with this number ending in. 682. Why would perf7 return a wrong number? Um, yeah, that's the number ending in 682. Perf7. So that'll take about three to four minutes to finish. And I have no way to parallelize it, unfortunately. So here's an opportunity to cover the rules of loser's chess. Um, and let's use the aid of the internet to figure this one out. Sorry for the bright, bright screen. Um, didn't mean to do that, but uh, I don't know how best to do this. Um, Wait, do they have an explanation? Uh, I'm not seeing. Um, differences with feed HS. Capture is mandatory. You win by being checkmated. Or you win by having a bear king. Um, so, yeah, it's a really weird, wonky variant. Um, you want to get, um, you don't want to give checkmate, but instead you want to force your opponent to capture one of your pieces there by checkmating you. Or you want to sacrifice all of your pieces and all of your pawns. Um, and that's also a win. Uh, stalemate is considered a draw per no as normal. If you can capture, you have to capture. Uh, captures that evade check or escape check are preferred over um, non-captures. Um, I think that's it. Um, so this position he's giving, e3, e6, king e2, queen h4, uh, e4. Any perf with depth larger than one gives wrong results. I'm not sure because in my testing that actually did work. So I'm curious if I can replicate his 642 number or replicate his 169 number. If I can replicate the 169, that means um, that I'm seeing the same behavior he's seeing. And I take him on faith because I don't think I see his source code that he claims to have fixed something, but I don't see the check in for it or commit for it. Um, so, the question is am I going to get the 169 number here? Indeed, I do. That took, as predicted, three and a half minutes. No, not three minutes, even. Two and a half. Okay, so I was mistaken. But yeah, I do get this number ending in 169. Um, and he does inform me that that particular position after these moves is a critical position. Um, so, yeah, I could take more time to delve in and figure out 
where the bug is. And I probably should do that. Let me fire up another terminal. You remember I dismissed my second terminal earlier this session. Um, uh, let's see. Um, but yeah, I'm going to need the second terminal um, to navigate over there. I'm going to drop in terminal 2 into my layout. This way I can run two engines at once pretty conveniently. Um, well, I can't even do this. OK, so here's how I'm going to do it. Um, he's insisting that I not merge his changes. In fact, yeah, I can't. I don't have a version that's just adequate to this task. Um, because I don't have his source code. If I had the source code that generated these numbers, I could step through it and see um, what the correct numbers are. But I don't have that. All I have, or all I'm able to use Stockfish for at this point, um, is for obtaining the FEN, the force that Edwards notation. Um, after that sequence of moves, which is uh, this FEN. Um, yeah, sure likes to comment here. do I how do I do windboard commands okay there we go I forced it to accept this position I just had to use the force command using the force command is quite useful for export engines apparently um, so perfed one Again, shows three legal moves. Perfed two shows 710. That seems inaccurate. Now, that is wildly inaccurate. If I go back to perfed one, again, I have three legal moves. Um, <laughs> yeah, 710. I kind of freaked out the first time I saw that number. I thought, well, that might be right. But upon further reflection, there's no way. 710 cannot be accurate. Um, so let me um, run this same command, except put an additional move in the queue. Uh, E3, E4. Um, oh. Yeah, I guess that's even checkmate in normal chess, and that's fine. Uh, H4, E4. And if I say perfed. Yeah. So if I'm searching a move that ha position that has no legal moves, um, nodes searched as zero. Whereas in the original position, Uh, no, it's searched. It's 40. Um, that's actually accurate for standard chess. Uh, if I say variant, give a way. No, that wouldn't have worked anyhow. Um, also, that's the wrong command. But, yeah. Um, yeah, nodes searched to evaluate to zero uh, when there's no legal moves. Um, and it's really that simple. Um, oh, 
Here's how we debug, by the way. First, add in some uh, assertion code. Um, and then at the end of this test, the assertion should fail. Um, so we're going to say assert uh, that our, where's our post number changed? Raw nodes. Raw nodes must be less than 100. Uh, and then I have to remove this line of code, which honestly should not, which has no business being in a release. Um, they say put that in the make file, don't put that in your source code. Uh, so we're going to recompile the engine. Uh, get this fen string at the ready again and uh, run string put it into force mode set the position to that fen for one um, oh see it returns 40 because there are 40 legal moves because I didn't say variant it has to be losers chess um, now if I do perfed one, uh, yeah, there's three legal moves. If I do perfed two, we fail. Raw nodes is uh, greater than 100. Okay, so that's, this is test-driven development, by the way. I put in a test, the test failed. Objectively speaking, you want your tests outside of your source code, not inside them, but what can you do? It's a poor man's test. Uh, what's a semicolon for? That didn't need to be there. Uh, it has me a little concerned, but okay. Oops. Um, so now. Um, yeah, why don't I actually put that up here? That seems like a more apt place to put that test. I'll have it in both places, why not? The more testing, the merrier. Um, and we'll see which test fails first. Put it into force mode, set the position, um, variant is loser's chess, and perf1 works, perf2 fails on line 243. Okay, so that's where it failed. Um, does our make file have any debugging options? It does. In fact, I can throw this right into the GNU debugger. Um, oops, GNU debugger is not in this directory, only the engine, sgeng, is in this directory. Um, we're going to run it using the run command. Uh, put it into force mode, set board to that position, um, and then, oh, yeah, variant with the set. Perfed one works. Perfed two fails. Um, get the backtrace. It fails. Unfortunately, the code got all optimized. Um, but no, shows us that line 243 from line 294, this failed. Uh, it doesn't provide any more debugging information than that. But at least we can see what's going on in line 294, which is the thing I was looking for. So this is where it failed. Um, so this is our case where we have no moves. No, sorry, we have moves. Um, 
that are captures, apparently. Wait, no, I think we skipped by that whole section because we didn't have any capture moves. Legals. Um, yeah, so this checks if any capture is legal, and if so, sets legals to true. Uh, this is the case where we tried generating moves that had initially failed. Uh, now we're going to try to generate moves that are captures. Um, and somehow, somewhere, things went awry. Um, possibly I did not copy this code correctly from the other code block. Um, so, okay, here's, um, uh, yeah, we can go down here. Um, does this do anything fancy? In check is equal to in underscore check. If we're in check, uh, we need to increase ext check and depth. Um, so this is just normal move generation for that variant. Um, possibly some of this stuff is necessary in my other uh, thing. Checks at index ply is equal to in check. Um, this I may need. I skipped over this earlier because I thought surely what's this data structure used for? Uh, but this is actually kind of complicated. <laughs> yeah, so probably, probably I broke it somehow. Um, Well, is it going to be a simple fix, or should I just declare this dead? Um, yeah, that's the whole search routine that it apparently uses. Stockfish code is, in my opinion, I know I've dealt with it a lot more, but in my opinion it's better organized. It's much more accessible uh, than this. So this is, I thought this would be the only part I needed to copy, um, would be this block that uh, has specifically to do with losers chests. Um, one thing that befuddles me is that we increment legals in this case, even though, well I guess somehow later on that legals must be utilized somewhere. Um, some pretty funky searching going on here that's for sure um, I don't think I need check extensions for this for what I'm doing where is legals declared is it a global variable if so this could get kind of messy um, 
I should probably just declare my own variable and uh, be content with that. Um, there it is. There's your global variable. You don't want to do that sort of stuff. Um, okay. None moves. Yeah. I think I want to declare my own um, variable. So I'm going to do that. Uh, so we're going to allocate that way up here. Um, along with everything else. Captures is equal to true, generate moves, captures is false. So down here, we don't need that at all. Um, that's probably okay. So I'm no longer using a global variable that I do not require use of. this string again. Okay, go into force mode, set the position to that, set the variant to loser's chess. Perfed one, it's three, perfed two. Raw notes for depth two is two. That also seems wrong. Unless that's saying how many nodes it actually bothered looking at. Um, if I further increase this, 54. So it does continue expanding. Why is perf2 equal to 2? Like, okay, let's figure out how many, how many games can we get? Queen takes pawn, that's mate, that's one node. Queen takes f2, forces king takes f2, that's two. That's two additional nodes, that's a total of three. And then queen takes pawn, rook takes queen, that's a total of five nodes. Um, so somehow upon deepening from step one to step two, we lost our, I don't know, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Um, is there any way I could make this simpler? Not really. Um... I could mm, no nope nope I could remove these uh, pawn and rook on the h file. So I could say set board. Oops. And I've got to I've got to retype a good deal of this. Uh, rook knight bishop queen one. Bishop, knight, one empty space. Black to move. Black has king and queen castle and rights. And this is the third. There we go. Um, let's hold on to that. Perfed one. We have two legal moves. Perfed two. We have um, one. Okay, so... I think the checkmate is resetting the perfed counter. That's unfortunate. Um, that could be entirely wrong also. So... Uh, I could leave.
leave that check there. I was considering getting rid of it because it's not proving useful anymore. But um, oh, wait. Legals is equal to zero at the start. Maybe I do require that global variable, but I also require um, another variable. Um, just to find out what happens, let's test the with the old code um, and say go into force mode, set board to this new position. Um, Variant is losers chess and perf one is two, perf two. Um, it fails because that exceeds the threshold. Um, probably in the same way. Oh. Hang on. Is there anything I can do here? Um, anything super ultra kludgy I could do? Um, yeah. There's a lot of options. Um, Oh wait, no, so I removed the line of code here that increased the legal move count, because I don't need that. Um, it's good the bat had no functional impact. Um, And if so, do all this stuff. In fact, this is the exact same code. Uh, check legal, etc., etc. No, I was just stumped. How is it that copying the code failed? Move total equals legals. I mean, we do a similar thing for counting, not just the move total, but a lot of fun stuff. Um, I suppose I need to have the side effect happen, although I'm not sure why I need it here. Um, There's something about the way that this deepens that doesn't extend well to uh, uh, the perfed code. Is there any code here specific to losing chess? It's just complicated. But yeah, I'm far more inclined to trust our own code than to trust this, which is demonstrable or demonstrably failing. Um, no moves, and we're not pondering. Result is white is made it. So that's that's a global variable called result. There might be something about undoing a checkmate in um, loser's chest that might have an undesirable effect. 
So if so, then that's not boding well for the engine in general. Um, is the result used anywhere inside this entire routine? For example, to see if we don't need to generate any moves. Um, is analyzing. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's definitely code which terminates a search, but I don't think there's anything which says don't search if, um, well, I could be wrong. This might be the code. If there's not a forced win, and uh, if all the moves are not losers and we don't have a result, uh, et cetera, et cetera. This is probably proof number search. Yeah, this is exactly proof number search. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm guessing that, um, I'm not sure if similar problems are going to happen. Um, yeah, that's weird. But because this code uses so many global variables, it's difficult to figure out which one of those global variables is responsible for the bug. Um, uh, so, I suppose that's as good as it's going to get. Uh, they improved the function that figures out um, how many legal moves there are in a position. Um, but yeah, this proof number search stuff, um, unless I see something as I flip through this, this is just not so good. <laughs> um, there's this thing called checks. Um, checks at index ply. I might need to, in fact, that might be a thing worth testing. Uh, is, oh no, is the set? Um, I'm not even sure what allocates checks. Let me take a look and see if it's statically allocated. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, so let's try setting that. Just see if we get a different result or not. And if we're doomed with this result, then I guess that's all we got. Um, that's not the string. Here's the, the cool string. All right. Recompile the code. Um, then from here, uh, variant losers, perfect one, perfect two, yeah. It appears we're kind of hosed. Um, so these are the commands I was issuing. Okay. So I can now execute that test as many times as I want, and it instantly crashes the program. Um, and yeah, I 
troubleshooting this is no longer worth it because even though I added comments as I was going along, um, existing comments are not particularly useful. Um, and the code is just kind of a mess. So there's basically no salvaging it. I know I promised in the stream title to fix all the bugs. Um, but sometimes you do have to say, you just have to admit that there are higher priorities. And I've done the best I can to look into this and figure out, um, you know, without devoting my life to figuring this out. Just try to understand what's going on. and uh, Just decomposing this problem is an enormous problem in itself. Um, and I'm not seeing anything in this older version of the code that's used for, for normal chess. And every non-losers chess variant um, uses this, just the standard idiom. Uh, just generate the moves, play a move, check if the played move is legal, and if so, advance. Otherwise, don't. Um, that didn't work for losers chess because the move generator generates illegal moves. Um, and then checks if they're legal. And that's a mess. So yeah, I'm not sure what's done, but somehow the PV or yeah, I guess the no, the PN proof number search does some manipulation of the move list. Um, and the way in which it's doing that just doesn't work at all for what we're doing. Um, you know, I could, there's one last thing I could test. test. Grab check legal. Let's define. Uh, uh, it's defined in one of the source code files. Where is this defined? Moves.c. Check legal. Uh, actually, rather than changing this definition, let's go back to our search and. Um, and we just say, you know, legality checking is nice and all, but it's not for us. Um, if true is another useful idiom uh, in cases where you're using a command line and not a debugger. Um, oh, true is undefined. Capital true, does that work? 290. Yeah, capital true works. At least with this library. Uh, so now I can rerun the test. Test still fails. I mean, at some point you have to start doing more and more aggressive changes to massage the code until you can expose um, its weakness. <clears throat> so I can maybe push things off a little bit beyond the horizon somehow. Um, like if we have a capture, the only thing we have to verify is that the capture doesn't put us into check. Um, but that might be unnecessary. No, I'm sorry. In check does not check if does not ensure that the move generator makes good moves. We could be not in check and still need to make captures that are uh, illegal. Uh, we need to verify whether they're legal or not. So yeah, no, this is about as accurate as it can get. My code change here is not to blame for the fact that um, the code's failing. There's a bug elsewhere. It's it's really well hidden. 
Um, <laughs> so the only other clue would be we could actually go into uh, this check legal function and see is it doing is the source code doing random things um, based on uh, like here um, if is attacked king location comma zero. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say it does something different for normal chess than for losers chess, but it does not. So whatever works for normal chess probably works for losers chess. Um, the only other clue would be I could search the code base for usages of the word losers. Let's see if it does anything special. Probably not. Um, I don't care about book learning. I don't care about a book. Eval.c might be worth looking at. Um, no, returns losers underscore eval instead of standard underscore eval. I mean, I could try changing some of these things. Because I don't really care what evaluations return, but I don't think we need to evaluate. Um, period for what we're doing. Um, so rank from is two or seven and the variance not one of those variants. Um, that's awfully suspicious. Rank from, okay. Case white pawn, um, pawn moves up a square only promotes when captures or oh yeah we don't care about cap um, promotions in our test position there is no promotion uh, is there anything else suspect there mm, I don't think so um, new book don't care proof.c I probably care search.c is where we were just at uh, utils.c um, Allocate time, we don't care. Um, this is all the time allocator code. Verify coordinates. Checks to see if the move the user entered was legal or not. Returns true if the move was legal or were legal. I don't know how which is more accurate or a subjunctive move, but um, it stores the legal move inside the variable move. Um, does that only work with, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna guess that utils is not where we're looking. So it's, I'm just curious what's here in PN, proof number evaluation. Um, so if our variant is not loser's chest, then we do some stuff. Um, inside this set proof and disprove numbers. Dude! Wait. Wait a minute. If we've got a function called set proof and disprove numbers, then if we know anything at all about how proof number search works, um, can't we also use this proof number search to generate, um, uh, the move count. Anyway. <laughs> Loser's chest. This looks a little bit more messy. Yeah, no duh. Um, L is not set. Then do all this stuff. If L is equal to zero, it could be stalemate. Um, else we set the evaluation appropriately. Oh dear. Yeah, no. How is it that you generated all the stuff that works for proof number search? Just immensely complicated. 
and yet you couldn't get perf to working. What was wrong with the... I don't know. I mean, congratulations on the achievement, but... Um, I'm confused. I'm very confused. But I did learn something from looking briefly at this, and that for loser's chess, they use a variable L instead of... Um, in fact, they use all this stuff. Um, they use L to indicate number of legal moves. I C for in check. Uh, anyway, um, what that means, I should probably do something more idiomatic according to their construct. Uh, so they call these L and num moves. So we're going to do the same thing. That's what they do. Um, and, oops, there we go. Uh, do make one more time. Get test.txt into pipe to the program. Um, Raw nodes for depth two is one. And while that's accurate, it doesn't present the correct total of the number of moves in the entire search tree, which is three. Um, uh, so yeah, if I try to do the same sort of thing, uh, I can't do it. Um, This would not work for, this would not be a valid test um, for what I'm trying to do for Stockfish because I don't have the source code yet. But just trust me, if I were to run this and if Stockfish had code to support uh, losing chess, it would come up with a number three. Um, the only way I could actually prove that is if I merged this work in progress into my code base. Um, which the developer is saying don't do that yet. Uh, so, yeah, that was fun ish. Um, unfortunately, yeah, we hit a roadblock on this. I thought my code was solid and I did everything I could and I didn't do anything wrong per se. It's just the only wrong thing is advising that it's fixed. Um, because it's really not. Or attempted to in any case. Well, so next thing to be a responsible citizen is we're going to copy this comment, go over to where I submitted this fix. By the way, um, Advises uh, and I agree that perfed seven and longer are incorrect. Uh, number. this saying that um, you know I attempted to fix this um, I have to comment over here 
Uh, let's do things the easy way. Say, yep, yeah, looks good to me. Uh, I duplicated the string results. Uh, okay. I replicated. Uh, test results and agree. It's live. Cool. All right. Two issues down. Um, only got these three tabs open. Um, so let's go back to the issue tracker. Um, see how our lively discussion is going. Yep. Um, relative difference of each square. could provide nice zero anchor points for tuning, but the relative difference of each square is very important. Um, King SPQST is worth... Oh yeah, the relative difference between each king square is important. Dude, you're confused. Okay. Don't need to go into that into too much detail. We're having a good theoretical debate about theory. Um, let's see. Stockfish. Oh, I can't get to my engine this way. Am I really going to have to full screen this and bring up the address bar? Apparently so. We full screen the browser. It's, there we go or unfull screen it in order to get to this. Um, we got three pull requests. The one's work in progress implementing loser's chess. Another is um, making an enhancement to get a longer principal variation during analysis. Um, but before I get through that sort of enhancement, I'm just trying to get all the bugs and kinks and things worked out. Uh, can I sort these by date of comment? Recently updated. Okay. So we've gone through loser's chess, seeing that we've made some really good progress and can almost close that out as soon as, in fact, we can, I think, as soon as Ian is ready with his side of things. Um, since I see no defect in what's done, everything that's there seems to make sense. Um, doing some regression testing. Uh, he updated this. I should actually bug him again. Um, thanks. Your result seems to confirm or affirm um, that um, the 22.12.16 release is strongest, or strong. Um, well, let's see, this, uh, how do I put this? What's the simplest way to express it? means to affirm that um, does not regress. Cool. Yeah, I think we're good. 
We're good. Call on that a day. Um, mate overlooked with this version of Stockfish. Most recent comment. I attempt to duplicate this, but maybe you can only... Yeah. Until somebody figures out a way to duplicate it, it's unassigned. Next issue. It's, in fact, filter is 17 open issues. This one has Ian on it, so I don't need to worry about it uh, at the moment. Crazy House Computer Championships is in progress. So we've all been commenting on that. It's awesome how that's going. Uh, if you want more information, um, you can find it in numerous places. I've been repeatedly telling everybody about it in the Chess forums and elsewhere. So if you just search for Crazy House Computer Championships, uh, computer, it's not even the correct title, but whatever. It's the point across that there's this computer crazy house variant association, the CCVA, that's running a 2016 championship. Um, and yeah, it's progressing quite well. Um, okay, most recent comment was by Isaac about a day ago. What did Isaac say here? Uh, okay. Oh, right. So I'm going to develop some new code. Um, I can't do that while I'm testing because I can't run. Well, I can only run so many tests at one time, so I can't code and test that right now. Uh, FYI. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's get the last 20 lines of this output and just keep tailing it. I think I have this set to run, oof, wow. I'd set this to run for a thousand games and it's only on number 300. I forgot how many times I restarted this test because it wasn't set up properly. Um, but I think it's finally starting to converge upon appropriate values for anti-chess pieces. Um, it was suggested earlier that I use positive values instead of negative ones, so I finally got around to changing that. And because I changed the code, I figured I should run the tuner and make sure I get appropriate numbers for the new code, just in case there's something wonky going on. Once the tuner finishes running, it's on iteration 300 at the moment. Once it completes 1,000 iterations, then I'll copy those constants into the source code, recompile Stockfish, run it with the new constants versus the existing best version of Stockfish and verify that it does not regress. Um, so that's the plan there. Um, once that's successful uh, with all that anti-chess development, then I can push all my test suite changes um, into Ian's tester. Um, we'll get into that when that does happen, but I have a whole backload of changes that I'm waiting to push and he keeps hitting me with these, well, not just he, but I keep getting hit by all these one-off issues. Um, and I'm sure I'll eventually get to pushing my changes to him. Um, but I'm doing what I can at the moment. Um, so that's a challenging issue. Is there a way to indicate scope of an issue? There's labels. I could use labels to say how big an issue is. Uh, that would be a good way to organize this sort of thing. Um, more losses from AI level 8 on December 8th. Now let's note that there was a December 9th release and there was a December 22nd release. However, if there are specific issues pointed out in this tracker, um, yeah, I can do some more tuning appropriately there. Um, I think that'll be enough to resolve that particular issue. Anti-chess Q search. Here's the one corresponding to my change that's in the hopper at the moment. Um, these constants are going to change again. Even though I've got those numbers there, I'm rerunning the tuner because my code base has been updated with numerous other changes, so I have to retune it anyway. Um, 
indirect king attacks and atomic chess. Is there something simple here I can resolve? Uh, oh, Ian's got it. Because I'm like... You seem to know way more about this issue than I do, so this is in your hands. Um, uh, is, is it any more complicated than that? Yeah, no, he's the one proposing suggestions, proposing code changes. I'm saying, I don't know, man, I'm really unconvinced. If he could convince me at all, I'd gladly share in the responsibility or even run with it myself, but that's in his court because... Um, He's the one understanding that suggestion better. Atomic Endgames with Adjacent Kings. Let's see, for this one, I've got to download um, Niklas... Uh, I'm forgetting his last name. Niklas Filas? Fiklas? Fieldas? I'm sorry I'm butchering that. But he's made contributions there, and they are really awesome. In fact, that's where we started this stream. Um, was uh, with his contribution to the endgame generator, which checks for legality. No, sorry, not legality. Checks for the expected result and best move for each position, having under seven pieces. Um, I forget if it for this. I think he said he generated six man uh, bases or table bases or ZG bases for all. Uh, the variants that he's done so far, which I think are atomic and anti-chess. Um, regardless, so he's saying here, Endgame, or I'm sorry, Ian's saying here, that Endgame's and atomic chess can be different from standard chess. Yeah. Use scale factor. Actually, I should say this all sounds good. Not only have I assigned myself, and I really like these suggestions, and it requires writing new code, but I really like the suggestion, so I'm going to run with it um, and see if I can get any kind of practical result out of it. Um, so we'll get back to that when I've got time for it. Here, um, got a really helpful comment about game phases in a related uh, game. Unihedrid, uh comments on how shogi works. So shogi, uh, the Japanese chess variant, very much like Crazy House, and in fact this issue is about Crazy House, and I mentioned, you know, game phases for Crazy House probably mean something quite different than for normal chess. Uh, Unihedron confirms this is indeed the case for shogi. Um, so the first part uh, is Joban, when you start and form your pieces for attack and defense. The aim of this phase is to position... Uh, they often use the word castle to describe um, the kind of fortresses that you set up on your side. I'm sorry, on where your king is presiding, which can be either side of the board, either the left or the right. Um, and um, you can set up an attack formation and a defense formation. And you're constantly balancing uh, between attacking and defense. Um, and there will be minimal capturing at this phase of the game. Uh, Chuban is when you initiate your attacking moves and start exchanging pieces, hopefully to your advantage. You will converge around your opponent's king, you judge the situation, the position of your pieces. Um, I'm guessing Chuban can also happen when your opponent starts exchanging around your king. Um, and Suban, I'm sure I'm butchering this because I do not know any Japanese. Uh, it's when you'll attempt to checkmate, or brinkmate, which is threatening to checkmate, uh, your opponent's king. Yeah, at that point, it doesn't really matter what's in hand. You could have tons of pieces or only a few pieces in hand. Um, but yeah, you're, a king gets quite endangered in this last phase. So there's this, the opening phase of the game, the Joban. Um, the phase where you start exchanging pieces. Um, Chuban. And then there's this phase where... Things just get accelerated and out of control. Um, Suban. 
And at that point, it's all about who checkmates first. And I didn't actually know there was this distinction between when an attack starts and when brinkmates and checkmates and really potent threats start to show up. Apparently, once you hit this last phase, um, there's no going back. <laughs> I mean, maybe there is, but the fact that they even come up with separate terms to describe them suggests that there's a significant difference between starting an attack and exchanging pieces and figuring out what pieces to exchange versus the last part where it's all about just exchanging as many pieces as possible and going for checkmate and brinkmate. Um, or not even exchanging as many pieces as possible, as many as necessary. Um, the value of pieces in hand is not as important. Um, speed to which you close in on your opponent is a top priority. So yeah, I have to take that back. The Chuban is like pouring gas um, near a fire and Zubahan is, um, well, at that point it doesn't matter how much gas you have, you've got the fire, and now you achieve something useful with it. Uh, strategies vastly differ from regular chests. Well, yeah, because in regular chests you can liquidate. Um, yes, that's an excellent suggestion. The Crazy House probably has similar phases, so I give credit to Unihedron for suggesting this. Um, how would you measure this in Crazy House? I'm not sure, but I guess if you have a game corpus, somebody could come up with some rules for defining um, how to figure that out. And then we could, there could be multiple different correct solutions, and we can just pick one, and if we find a better one, pick that one instead. Some conclusions. Uh, so yeah, we did have a number of matches of human versus stockfish. Those were fun. Um, Jan Lee was very interested in these matches, and we were glad uh, to have him. Um, he played very well. Um, I said stockfish. Yeah. Um, regression test results. This is something that they just keep expanding over time. I'm not sure if there's a better place to put it. Operazen um, beat... Uh, yeah, Operazen had some good games too. He has a different playing style than Jan Lee. Um, and I need to get in looking into this at some point. However, um, this is actually a really good example. Um, even though it doesn't have any compelling action item with it saying this is the reason that this failed. Um, this, having this example is at least half of the puzzle, or half of the problem. Uh, test scaling. So I still have to see if I can duplicate this, although I've assigned it out to Vin Vin. He seems more than content to have at it. Um, I commented about a week ago explaining um, we would expect about a 260 ELO gain from using six threads over using one thread. Um, instead he's demonstrating a... what gain is he demonstrating? Um, Actually, he didn't even express this in terms of ELO, did he? And I'm not sure how to generate that, which is why I stuck to my terms, he stuck to his. Um, six core is high, but could not get 100%, even starting from a three to six point advantage. But yeah, the time control was also quite rapid um, I'm really not sure what it is that we were trying to test, or why scaling is testable in this particular way. Uh, wait, six times speed should produce about 260 ELO gain. Uh, 
even without considering efficiencies using some kind of multi-processing stuff, I guess. Um, did I echo that? Oh, so, oh, no, I was not saying that. Um, I was saying that it's possible some of our numbers might be wrong. The reason um, the numbers that came, people came up with earlier in this thread could be incorrect. Um, yeah, I'm just saying there are other factors to consider when testing for scaling. Uh, so that's okay. Um, that's in Vinvin's court because he's the most... He actually relayed to us from the forum what was going on. Um, I suspect that forum post is probably going to die out at some point, um, but whatever. Um, it's low priority for me if Vinvin never does anything with it, and if this issue list gets cleared up at all. Um, then I'll go back and figure out the right way to test that. Um, in the meantime, I'm still trying to set up the uh, Stockfish test server called Fish Test, and it's being a bit challenging at the moment. Um, this issue, variant material. Oh yeah, this is the one where I, I was going to push a whole bunch of changes to Ian's project. Um, Uh, da, da, da. Actually, yeah, I still need to come up with some better techniques. Um, I found that for at least one variant, it was useful to have these values uh, per temp uh, to measure. I'm oh, sorry, this is different. He's trying to say um, this is actually quite a complex change. I'm going to have a change that customizes. Uh, what's considered an end game versus what's considered a middle game position. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure about any of that. There, I can figure that out at some point, but there's no urgency on that because we still haven't gotten our testing and tuning exactly right. This I'm still kind of alarmed about. Um, so whenever an issue comes up and I can't explain it, I just say I have a open bug. Um, and I'm not even sure if this is a bug or not, but um, I'm assuming that uh, if I close some other, uh, I'm sorry, if I manage to resolve this somehow, then anything else that's not explainable and that's not reproducible on demand can be closed until they occur again. So if I manage to close this and fix it, I'm assuming that it needs to be fixed, but one way or another, if this is resolved, um, I think that I could safely resolve anything that I'm saying is caused by it. Um, because yeah, it's great to have, like, say we got, um, Stockfish lost a game. Okay, there have been newer releases of Stockfish, but there still might be some chance that this is reproducible in the newer Stockfish, maybe. Um, not sure how you'd go about reproducing Stockfish losing a game, but you can. there are some pretty concrete examples in some of these games of it making some pretty bad moves. You can see um, how resilient it is, how much it tries to avoid some of these moves. Fine. Um, you could see, I don't know what else you could test with it, but some of these things that are more difficult to duplicate, um, might be resolved by doing, uh, resolving this. So if there's not an open bug and somebody provides an issue that has no means of duplication or replication, um, then, um, then that'll be that with some of those issues. Uh, this is a good idea. Benchmark positions for variants. Uh, it's Ian's suggestion that for each variant we have some collection of good test positions. Um, my initial idea was, well, 
let's just, just take as many test positions as possible. And he's saying that's not necessarily practical and it'd be better to have a good corpus of test positions. I don't disagree, but I'm not motivated to go develop that at this time. Even though having that would actually help us with other issues, as he points out. Um, like this one, where he's suggesting making a pretty extreme change. And you know, if we had this collection of test positions for every variant, we could safely make this change and not need to worry so much about doing code analysis. Fine, but I'm not highly motivated on this change at the moment. It's a great code change. It makes the code look better, um, but I'm not sure. It not only makes it look better, but it makes it easier for uh, the compiler to optimize some things and easier to maintain code over time. And I do care about those things. However, with um, so many bugs in the queue at the moment, it's hard to focus on this sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that's the state of the coding at the moment. Um, hope you enjoyed. We'll be back with some other games in just a little bit. Take care, and have a good day.